listening to the All Metal Mode podcast. Sit back and enjoy the shenanigans of Mike and Sue as they discuss all aspects of metal detecting and everything else treasure related. For those of you who play the How Many Times Will Mike Say Relic Machine game, grab a beverage of your choosing and have responsible fun. We hope you enjoy the show. What about now? Can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? What about now? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear? Can you guys hear me? 
Barb, you can hear me? Hello, Barb. Hello. Okay, Barb can hear me. Jesus, I don't know what's going on. We're having all kinds of issues. Um, I got to get our callers in and everything else. I think I lost them. Let me see what's going on. Good Lord, what a headache. Um, what a pain. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Uh, I sincerely apologize. I don't know what's going on, but uh, what just a total pain in the rear here. As soon as I went on, there was there was nothing. More Skype updates, more issues. Let me see. Um, let me see if I can get Justin back, and if I can. Hello. Okay, I'm calling him now. Hopefully, I can get him back in. Sorry, guys. Well, I, this is like my fourth attempt at getting these guys back in. Hey, you guys there? I'm in. Okay, I'm in. Matt, you in? We do not have Matt yet. Um, let me see if I can get Matt. So, again, I apologize. Uh, oh, what a pain here. Um, let's see if we can get Matt at it. Are you still with me, Justin? I am indeed. Uh, I have reached the voicemail of Matthew Hoffman at B-Mag Cranes. Please leave me a detailed message, and I will get back to you. Come on, Matt. Are you still there, uh, Justin? And I lost them both. Why are my sounds? I, like, I turned my sounds off and everything. Mike. Yeah. I'm back. Is Justin still there? Yeah, you guys are there. Okay, okay, hold on, guys. I'm going to put you on hold. I didn't get to the – it was complete just uh, uh, everything. As soon as I went live, we had no audio, no, no nothing. So uh, let me uh, put you on hold. Let me, let me get the show started here real quick. Be right back with you. Don't go anywhere. So, <laughs> wow, that was like our worst start ever. Like we always have issues, but good Lord. Um, before we get started, I want to say something and um, get it out there. You know, we all make mistakes and um, I'm doing this uh, all on my own. And Barb, you'll, you'll like to hear this, I'm sure, because you and I discussed this. Um, probably a few months ago, um, I said that Mind Lab wasn't known for their customer service and heard some bad stories. I can tell you since then, I have heard nothing but good stories. Um, great customer service, quick turnaround, all that stuff. And, and I want to offer an apology. I can promise you I was not contacted by MindLab or anything else. I am strictly going off of what people have been telling me. So, um, you know, I, I just wanted to put that out there. Bill's asked me if I need to restart. Can you Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Barb just responded to what I said. So um, I think we're good. Um, no, I restarted twice already or once and then uh, restarted my programs. It was uh, just a fiasco when I went live. Um, this new Skype, I think, has everything messed up. I don't know what's going on. Some of my settings were changed and uh, I just had to get it uh get it up and fixed. So I, I don't know what, what all happened, but everything froze as soon as I went live. And, uh, the second time I tried to get it, didn't have any sound. And then the third time I noticed some of my settings had changed. I had to change, which shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened. But, uh, as long as you guys can hear me and we're all doing good, good deal. But yeah, I just wanted to apologize for that. You know, Hey, I think, um, good for them to get their stuff straightened around. I, matter of fact, I've heard of several instances lately 
about mine lab their quick turnaround they're dealing with the problems um treating the cu customers good matter of fact matt's one of them matt's uh module yeah, went out on his ctx 3030 and they they turned it around real quick for him got him a new one shipped out and uh good for mine lab good on them um uh, i want to announce next week we have gypsy um her her youtube channel is zero discrimination and I'm really excited for that. Um, she is a great person. We have since became friends. I think I just like her a lot. Um, what a passionate person, just really passionate about the hobby and stuff. So, uh, Matt, you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. Oh, my goodness. Uh, when As soon as I hit live, I was man, getting worried. I said, everything, hey, what's going on? <laughs> everything froze the second I hit live and then. Uh, there were a bunch of issues, and it's just like, oh man! But uh, we got it up and running. I right, chance. Hey, Mike, I, go ahead. Well, I want to tell you when I tried to call you back, it said user busy, like it was doing the the other week. Uh, so, but then when you called me, it obviously worked. So I don't know if people are going to be able to call in or not. Uh, probably not. Probably not. I, I think for tonight, we'll probably uh, until Skype gets their stuff taken care of. You know, I can't even add new contacts to Skype. Did I tell you that? No. No, I can't even add new contacts. It's a mess, man. I hate this new Skype. Um, it's just a hot mess. Um, hate it, man. It's It's been nothing but trouble since it came out. But uh, we're here. We made it. Um, I'll try to go back later and edit out the first, like, 10 minutes that was messed up and uh, – yeah, literally, like 10 minutes, I think, almost, that uh, uh, was messed up. And uh, I can always go back, to, uh, download it, delete it out, the first part, and up, re-upload it. I'm not going to be able to do it tonight, though, but uh, we'll get it fixed around. Hey, we still have some people in, in chat showed up and um, dealt with the issues and, and all that, so good deal. Um, how you doing, man? I'm all flustered now. <laughs> that was tough, man. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, man, if I log on to the to the, the Spreaker site and click uh, kick the podcast on and I hear them talking, I'm going to be I'm going to be upset. Like, uh, I don't know what's going on. I could hear you like I could hear stuff shuffling like in the background. But that, that I, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it was real weird, but I think it was my microphone setting through Spreaker, but it was set right earlier. I don't know if Skype changed it or what in the world went on there because, I mean, I kind of have a checklist of everything I, I check as soon as I come on, you know, and you and I, we'd done a pre-recording. Sounded great. No issues. Yeah. And then uh, I think I think in this particular case, I think Spreaker went on the frets, and I'm not sure what. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. But uh, tonight, um, uh, our guest is Justin DePace. Am I saying that right? You got it, man. That's easy enough. Um, but uh, just Justin and I, I'm kind of funny. You know, this kid has really uh, wreaked havoc on me, man. I. They, they talk about, you know, Steph thinks that uh, having the baby, she's um, more forgetful. And I think she calls it like mom brain or something. There's dad brain, too, because it's funny. I've been looking for guests. And uh, me and Justin talked uh, a while back. And, and, man, he had some great stories and stuff. And, Justin, I apologize. I don't know why I, I didn't ask you to do the show. Or maybe I did. Maybe I said, hey, down the road, let's do it. But... I've been looking for people to do the show and I'm like, Oh my God, why didn't I ask Justin? You know? So I, I don't know, man. I just, I get forgetful. I got so much craziness going on with kids and stuff, but Hey, I'm really glad to have you. And I'm, I'm excited for you to share some stories with us and stuff tonight. And I'm stoked to be here. Good deal. Good deal. Um, I, I, you know, I got some some questions. What about you, Matt? Did you, did you do your homework? Oh, uh, I've I, I've got uh, <laughs> I've got a few, and uh, let me just say, I got a lot of questions, especially being the fact that uh, he's not far from us. He's within a very 
uh, attainable and reachable drive from where I'm at. So, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Matt, I'm going to hey. put disclosures on my videos, Matt, you can't figure out where I'm at. Hey, Justin, <laughs> Matt's, yeah. a, Matt's a real good guy, but be careful. I mean, he's... He, he's, he's got a heart of gold, but he's the guy who will show up at your door at 6 in the morning knocking on your door. Hey, buddy, you want to go mail detecting? Let's go mail detecting. No, no, no. No, I'm kidding. Four in the morning. Right. Before. That's all right. That's um, you can meet my dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for, before we even get started about mail detecting, tell us what you do for, for a living. I'm well, a well, it's not even a living. But tell us, you can tell us that too. But what, what do you do is like... Uh, I don't think it's more than a hobby, right? Yeah, no, that's what I do for a living. Okay. Day, seven days a week, I beat steel. I, uh, I'm i a blacksmith, one of the few that actually make a living doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just pretty fun. I mainly do ornamental. Don't ask about knives. Knives are kind of like, so, like, I, I know every knife maker in the country is going to have a fit, but are you ready? Knives are kind of like... Swinging with like an Ace One Fifty compared to a CTX, um, <laughs> it's, it's 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 just a flattened piece of steel. Um, there's a lot to heat treat and everything else, but uh, I, I'm more ornamental. I make roses from one piece of bar and all the scroll work and collaring and banding and rivet work and mechanical joinery and I do I stick I do a lot of artistic stuff. Um, That's cool. I didn't know I can't draw, but I could forge anything. Uh, it's kind of kind of weird man that's pretty cool now do you have a website or anything for that i just run on facebook you can look up the pace ironworks is the name of the business okay Um, my last name's with ironworks so yeah i had a website for a little while and i i'm bad with this whole internet stuff i'm like half honest or something i don't get on it too much so facebook (laughs) seems to work out for me i got you hey that works um yeah, I I got to check that out, man. I, I that's that's like a really well, it's kind of coming back some, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, the, the more the consumers become educated about the the product, it, it helps. You know, the like railing, you could go to Home Depot and get something that you know, like some faux iron that looks like something. Um, but I make the stuff that was there originally, the 150 year old iron, the, the railing that lasts. You know, you're dead right. and gone before it has any problems. Right. Um, but so you know, how did you get a, into that to start with? Dude, it's kind of a crazy story. I was um, 16 years old, and um, I used to go help out this auto mechanic. I grew up right outside of Pittsburgh, and it was a cool little community, man, this old Italian guy. And um, I, I liked working on stuff, you know, and started hanging out in there, and he put a wrench in my hand. and this dude, this old big guy used to come in that was always real dirty, and he grabbed my arm one day, and he says, you're a big fella, boy. You want to be a blacksmith? <laughs> and I thought, whoa, who is this dude? And I, uh, I, I hid from that guy. He used to come in and pick up, like, you know, like coil springs from struts and pieces of leaf springs that broke and, you know, just whatever kind of scrap was laying around the shop. And years later, I was probably, I don't know, not too long later, I was probably – year and a half later another guy asked and i said man i better try this out because people keep asking me and i learned how to shoe horses first and which is kind of creepy because i grew up in the city i didn't i've never petted a horse you know <laughs> my first experience is like underneath a horse looking at a hoof and i'm thinking oh boy i'm into something but uh time went on and i went from shoeing horses to making ornamental iron and i don't know it just took off from there and somebody asked if i could make this pretty thing and i thought yeah i could do that and next thing you know i started making fancy stuff that i would have never thought i could make you know like i said i can't draw man so i made like the one sculpture piece i've won multiple art awards as a rose growing out of a sledgehammer i mean you know what i mean i'm like yeah oh, yeah i'll do that do that so it's cool man i enjoy it um it you know it becomes a job like everything else when you have to make money at it it's it's not as fun as it used to be, but especially in the summer, man, the shop was like 140 last week. So, That's very cool. so it gets a little rough. That's very cool, man. I'm actually looking at your your Facebook page now. Very very cool stuff, um, for sure. Very cool, man. That's awesome. Good man. deal. Um, I have fun with it. 
So uh, well, let's get into metal detecting now. If anybody wants to look, uh, um, let me pull it back up because I just uh, depace D E P A C E Ironworks. Uh, some cool stuff on there. Um, we're checking out if you're into iron. I think metal detecting, it'd be hard not to be into some some iron work stuff, you know. Um, yeah, very yeah. neat. Um, that's why I asked. So, how how long ago how long how long you been detective? I started probably, I don't know, I'd say eight years ago. <laughs> I think it's, it's been about eight years. And you've you've used a lot of detectors over those eight years, haven't you? Yeah, it's easier to tell you which ones I haven't used. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the CTX is probably about it. <laughs> right, um, right. I've had the CF-77, um, I don't know, a bunch of older white machines, uh, of course, the Garrett H-250. Uh, currently, man, I'm swinging the Knox, the T-2, and a myriad of Tresaros. And I'm pretty happy with what I got going right now. You and I have talked, man. I, I love Tesoros. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Um, what do you think about the Knox? So, <laughs> I'm going to make everybody angry. So, check this out. Ready? Yeah. I My personal opinion, Mind Lab has the most brilliant marketing strategy in the entire world. You take 50 numbers opposed to every other machine that has a VID that has 100, okay? Mm-hmm. So, if like so I, a mine lab thing right a nickel's a 12 right everybody knows that a nickel's a 12 so if you're bumping from like 10 to say 13 14 that's only three numbers in your mind you go that's a nickel right right well not with a mine a lab math, <laughs> yeah right so if you do a little math though a four number swing is actually like an eight number swing because it only has half the numbers Right. Now, if you're swinging a T2 and you get an eight-number swing, you're not real confident on that dig. But with a mine lab, at least for me, I haven't, you know, I'm not a, like you guys are CTX, T-Track, Beast. But for me, like, I'm thinking, hey, this could be something because it's only swinging three numbers. And then the one day I had, like, a eureka moment, I went, wait a minute, there's only 50 numbers. <laughs> so, like, a two-number swing is a pretty big swing on a target. Right. Um, but... So far, I I think that, I don't know, man, I hate to talk smack. I don't have a ton of hours in it, but um, I can tell you that if you come back through some of my videos, um, me and Johnny hit a yard. Um, he pulled a pile of silver out of it. I pulled a large, um, I pulled a silver 50 half, silver half out of there and some other stuff. And the yard was pretty well dead. I hit it with the Knox. We hit it with E-Tracks. We hit it with AT Pros. Um we we beat that yard pretty bad, and I came back with the outlaw, and I pulled a silver brooch, two Indian heads, handful of I pulled another V nickel. Um, I pulled like seventeen or eighteen good targets in about three hours, and I I, I what can I say? You know what I mean? I, it All is right. what it is. You know, would I go to a new park with a non VID machine? I doubt it. If I was looking for clad in a park or you know, coins in a park. I'd probably go crazy digging foil and pop tabs, but right. these old colonial sites and these older home sites we're digging, we don't have that much modern junk in the yard. I, I think there's something real amazing about that simplicity of the beep and dig, man. I, the more I use it, the more I love it. That's great. So, so what would you say if you had a choice, if you could take one machine out with you between the T2 or the, the Knox? What are you going to take? I would, I would take the T2, and I'd run it in single yeah. tone, disc at 30, sensitivity as high as it let me go, and I'd run the snot out of it, man. Uh, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you could beat that machine. I, for me, the hearing. I don't know. Some of you guys might like the DP tone, 10, 15, 20 tones, but I hear like four, no matter what I put it on. Uh, <laughs> so for me, <laughs> so. For me, a single tone that repeats like, you know, left and right and gives me a number that says it's probably not iron, 
I'm digging. My main concern is its ability to separate that iron. And I think the more you put, um, the more smart you put into a machine, the dumber you have to be to use it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're looking at the screen and 25 different tones and you're trying to make this like huge decision. I'd rather just hear beep, beep. And it's telling me it's in the seventies. I'm digging it. You know what I mean? Um, I don't care if there's a nail next to it. I just want to. Yeah, I mean, it. that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I think that, sometimes, and, and, I think sometimes we overcomplicate things and, and, some of these high-tech detectors can overcomplicate things. I, I agree with that. I think, uh, you know, Matt, I Matt's up there in Northeast Ohio, and and uh, I'm trying to get him into field hunting, which he's getting really excited. He, see, he knows what I'm talking about. And uh, although he hasn't been much of a field hunter yet, I'm like, man, this fall, that's where it's at, you know. And uh, I'm like, and you, and you need a Tesoro. And he's like, well – they look like toys and this. And then I'm like, man, the, I know they're simple, but they get the job done. And they work in iron about better than anything else out there. Um, yeah. And when I, you get, I, when you, I, go ahead. No, I, like I said, I, that, um, the old fort yard we hit, that yard was, I mean, that you're hitting into the 1700s. It, it that's a, that place had more coal slag and you dig a hole and half of it was cold slag and, I, I noticed that like the T2 struggled in multi-tone, but as soon as you knocked her down to one tone, run the disc up a little bit, and it, I, it did really well. That's the only other machine other than Tresaro that I felt comfortable there with, but I wasn't falsing, and you know, you, you really could think it was actually detecting. Mm-hmm. Well, I think no. there's a lot of machines that maybe, and maybe they don't struggle necessarily in, in like a multi-tone, like a, a mine lab in a multi-tone, but. I, I, there's a lot of machines that the, the lower amount of tones that you run that you're definitely going to see improved performance and depth on a lot of that stuff because it's just processing a whole heck of a lot more and what it's got to do. So it just it definitely seems to make a big difference. But um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, for me, like I, I don't mind, I wouldn't mind so much in a field. Let's say if I, if I was out in the farm field or something, that wouldn't be a big deal. I don't have the trash but if you hit some of the older parks that where there's uh, a, a ton of um good stuff potentially there but you also have a ton of modern trash you know I, I don't know for me i i don't know and that's where not to get off subject but i think the rudest you had mentioned you know the the amount of numbers you have with the equinox um whereas the rudest i mean it's got a huge spread uh in on that machine. So, you know, the Equinox kind of throws me a little bit and I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure that I like what they did with the numbers, how they kind of change those up a bit, but on that machine compared to the, the 3030 or the E-Track, but then again, I don't have one at the moment, so I'm not going to worry about it. Right. Yeah, no, I think it comes down to what you hunt. Like I, we don't, we don't have parks where I'm at. And, you know, I'm only two and a half hours from you. Um, we have more, you know, corn than houses. So, uh, I mean, we don't like, I hit, I go to a park and there might've been like 60 people in there in a year. Um, they're just, there's wow. just not the stuff. So for me, uh, old home site fields, like he's saying woods, I, I get those old maps and, uh, I find the roads that don't exist anymore that had six houses on them in the middle of the boonies. And I go find yeah. a foundation somewhere, you know? So that's why I would never though, like hit a park without multiple tones and a strong VID. It would, that would drive me nuts digging parts of aluminum cans and whether the garbage could be there, you know? Hey, I'd like to say that's, real That's where. Go ahead. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and that's where I think the uh, a machine, that's where something where like the 3030 really seems to excel for me or the E-Track for that matter. Um, is when you're hitting a place that's trashed out with a ton of modern trash, you can still get in there and I can weasel stuff out of, and I don't know if you like a big or small coils, uh, or what size coil you run on that P2, but, uh, Mike's always making fun of me. I love the, that 17 inch coil on the 3030. That thing 
it's just a beast. And I don't care what anybody says. Take me to a place that's trashed out, and I will still weasel awesome finds right out of that place with that big coil. I don't know how you guys do that. Johnny does that with that uh, with his AT Pro. He has that sewer lid on there, and I don't know. He he can hear something I can't hear because he'll be like, "Oh, listen to this one," and it's like, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, dig away, my friend." But <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't get it. I, I just bought that uh, the sewer lid for the T2. Uh, they had a good deal run. I think it was only 80 bucks. I actually can't wait to get that out in the field and cover some ground with it. But I run the stock coil. I, I kind of don't buy into the whole, you know, Coors makes a better coil than the company that made the machine kind of deal. So I figure, if, like, you know, whoever made the machine made the coil with it, it, it kind of should go with it. So I kind of stick to the stock coils that they give you or buy, you know, and I don't know. I've, I've had pretty good luck. I, I've tried a couple of those, uh, what is it? The fours, the, uh, oh, come on, the yellow box, um, the cores coils. Yeah. I didn't see, yeah. I didn't see any difference on my E track. I had the, I bought the Hunter. It's like a little narrower, longer coil. And I air tested it, played with it, the field. I got a crappy little test garden put up and, I couldn't tell any difference. I did the nail board test and it did just as good as the stock coil. So I, I thought I kind of wasted some money, but everybody has their opinions. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm for the most part, I'm with you. I think the manufacturers tend to make better coils in most cases, but, um, not always. And, and I've ran into some, uh, well, uh, the ultimate or, uh, who makes the ultimate, uh, who yeah, makes Nell I think Coors does. Uh, mm, I think that's Coors does the ultimate. The I mean, ultimate it's, it's third. The ultimate, the Thunder, and the other one. I don't know. Ultimate may or uh, whoever makes the ultimate thirteen made like an eight inch coil for the E track, and um, I heard guys say it kicked the eight inch mine lab coils butt. Um, really? Yeah. Where now the- I'm with you in most yeah. cases. Yeah, D Tech, right? Yeah, D Tech made a nasty uh, coil. Yeah. I had a, I had a Mine Lab Explorer. He, what's that? Explorer Two, the one that kind of looked like a knee track, but it was gray. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't the old old one, but the one in between um, before I got my E track, and I had that. The Safari. With the, no, he's no. talking about the SE or the SE Pro, or the Explorer yeah. Two. Yeah. Yeah, but it it's uh I like that D Tech coil on it. The six inch D Tech is what I ran on it all the time. Um, opposed to the stock coil that came with it. But yeah, I like that D Tech coil. Yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, and I think there's coils out there, but I'm with you. I'll pretty much stay with the manufacturer. Hey, so I want to back it up a, a little bit. You were talking about uh like the separation and, and the two tone or one tone and all that. Um, me and, and, um, Paul, Paul Vento's in chat. We were talking a little bit about, uh, the, the cruiser and two tone. And one of the features the cruiser multi cruiser has and, and the impact for that matter, it's the same company macro Nocta. They have iron volume. And that to me is life changing. If you're a relic guy in heavy iron, because you can turn it down. And you can turn it all the way off. You can run that detector wide open, like all metal mode, and just turn the iron volume down or off. And, you know, when you're hunting a field, it's nice to listen to it so you know what kind of ground you're in when you're in that heavy iron. But you can turn it down so it's not like blasting your ear out. And I really right. dig that, man. That's that's a pretty impressive detector. Have you used one yet? No, I haven't. I, I had a CF-77 for a little while. and. It was okay. Um, I don't know. I, I think it was okay. I, I didn't keep it real long. I, I wasn't real super impressed with it. Um, I always said it'd be amazing if they could change some of the processes on those machines. Cause like we just talked about every time you, you detract a function, you, you hurt depth or you hurt separation or, I mean, there's just so much more the computer has to try to sort through. It'd be amazing. Like if you could just take a frequency 
of an audio response and like you said, either silence it or delete the frequency of the audio and let the machine continue to process everything as fast and as full as it can be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell you when, you know, and I think you and I talked about this before when, when I'm field hunting, I'm, I'm a Tesoro guy. I think there's, there's uh, something to be said about the simplicity of it. And, um, you, you know, when you're relic hunting where there's a lot of iron and no modern trash or little modern trash, I don't think, I personally, I don't think you can beat out a Tesoro. That's my opinion. But the multi cruiser, the impact where you can turn that volume down, that iron volume, and still run wide open and stuff, man. And it is, it is a, you get it set up right, and it is a deep, fast, um, they're just incredible. Me and Matt met up. Um, I'm I'm definitely with you on that. I know that that first day you showed me that I was like, oh wow, that's amazing. Like, I with I that, met up with that. You don't have to silence it. You just turn it down to a so it's not blowing your ears out the whole time, and that's that's incredible. You still know what kind of ground yeah. drain stuff. And um, I when I met up with Matt, I I had multiple coils and i and i fully intended to use them in the heavy irons uh go down to a smaller coil and i never did and i just totally forgot at the end of the day i'm like oh my god i never even tried the other coils but it was you know with the stock 11 inch coil uh it was getting the job done like i didn't feel like i was getting hung up in any of the iron it was it was dealing with it no problem so uh it's very impressive for that. I, I just want to throw that out there since me and Paul were talking about it and stuff in chat. But, yeah, I haven't got to play with one yet. It'd be, it'd be cool to try one out. I'll tell you what I like to do. I like to take something that I feel confident with, like like the Tresaro, the Outlaw, or the Vaquero, and uh, bring another machine and go through like a small patch, like an area that's, like you said, that's dense in iron, like you're hitting something real good in the field, mm-hmm. find that hot spot. And dig through like normal, you know, dig your good targets. And then I'll whip out another machine like the Tresar or something and go through the same spot and see yeah. how many or if any targets were hanging. And I don't know. I, I, I haven't, I, to be honest with you, man, it, it's hard to get for me anyways. I'm like a candy guy. It's like all candy to me. I want to, I wish I had every machine made so I could play with them all. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that sounds like I, someone I know. Right. You, yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Wouldn't it be, let, let me ask you guys a good question all right tell me this would not be the most perfect machine waterproof instead of multiple frequencies because i i know you guys love your mind labs but i'm not sold that a if a machine has a hard time making information when you change from three to seven tones i just wonder how much more process the machine's doing when i'm sending 27 different signals down at the same time too but wouldn't it be amazing to have a waterproof machine that had some uber low kilohertz, like a 4K HD, like a silver destroying kilohertz, and then like maybe a 10 and a 20. And you could go, hey, I'm in really thick iron. Let me cut through this iron with this 20 kilohertz and detect through and then be in the open field and flip her on like four. You know what I mean? I, I think well, I think we've easy. we've got that with the Equinox, and um, I mean, you can set that to run on on. You don't have to run the eight hundred on uh, multiple at all times. Single, you can yeah, multiple for yeah. Um, you know the now the uh, man, I'm stuck. Um, <laughs> on the um multi cruiser, I mean, you've got five. 14 and 19 i think and um i was looking at that you know you can do that and um i don't know i think some of these new machines are will will, will do what you're talking about i mean i'll go to i've got a trashy park down the road and when i get out i'll go I'll, i'll put well any trashy like park and stuff i'll put that uh that detector in five and look, at five kilohertz, you're still going to pick up a dime, no problem. You're you're yeah, probably absolutely. I'm I'm probably not going to pick up uh, uh, the back off of a gold earring, but I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not going to go digging all those things. I mean, literally, I went out there the other day and I was counting, and on average, 
a swing one direction, I was getting five signals. And I don't do a big wide oh, swing. That's trash. I mean, yeah, just trash everywhere. You're not going. I'm not going. Yeah. Maybe somebody would. I'm not going to dig uh, for gold signals at a place like that. But you know, I'll go in there in five means. kilohertz, quiet it down, quiet down that little scrappy trash, and go dig mm-hmm. for coins. Um, you know, so. I, I think it's there. I think what you're talking about is already there. And, uh, you know, I agree with you on, you know, like, like I said, I don't understand why a Tesoro single tone, everything just kicks butt in the iron. But I think this latest generation, I don't know about the knocks. I, I don't know. I've not, I haven't swung one, but I'm guessing it'll do it and pretty darn good. Um, but I, you know, I know that the impact and that they'll, they'll handle iron. Some of the best detectors you've ever seen handle iron. That and the multi cruiser. Yeah. I mean, the multi cruiser is like the little brother of the of the impact. I mean, pretty much, it's a waterproof, lighter weight, a few less programs. It's it's a little brother. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think it's and, kind and of. Me, I want to throw. I want to throw this out there, Mike. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. Regarding back to the whole multiple frequency thing, I personally believe the biggest advantage that you have with multiple frequencies is is if you got a targeted depth, your target ID is unbelievably stable. Um, um, other than that, I, I'd say it's worthless. But uh, um, you know, but, but that's the other thing too, like. Most of the places, most of the places, most people, if you got something that sounds good anyhow, who cares mm-hmm. about the target ID? You're going to dig that. I mean, you're not going to let it sit there. Well, I would hope not. At least. Right. That, I think that's so. what gets me. Like, I don't know. I like, the, I wish I could fry worms when I'm swinging. Like, I want, I want every ounce of juice I could stick into the dirt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just some kind of a lure behind me. I, I bruise, I cruise YouTube pretty, I'm like the, like the underground sneaker on YouTube. I try to find all these weird videos and then I get, I get on like a kick, man. Every John will ask me, he'll go, so what uh, machine are you looking for now? Um, but I, I, I've been looking at like some of the older whites machines, like the classic IDX. And then with the Mr. Bill mods. And I saw there's a guy up in new England. He had a, uh, he had a, uh, a day. And I, I forget his name. He'll, I don't remember anybody's name, but uh, he had this dais and he's a pretty big channel. He had 25,000 subscribers or something, but um, he's in this, this home site, this old abandoned, you know, cellar hole. And he finds this target with the IDX and he's like, this is golden. And there's like a little square cursor just hanging out on penny. And uh, he goes, let's see what the dais says. And he puts the dais on it. It sounded like a sorry pinball machine. It was like, you know, and he goes, would you really dig this? And he dug it. It was a colonial copper. And I, it got me, that's what got me thinking about what's, what are we doing? Are we making advancements or are we just pretending like we are? You know what I mean? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm actually working on an article about this. Um, mm mm-hmm. Uh, about the misinformation out there. I don't know this guy and I don't know what he did, but the first thing you got to do is, is okay. You look at what people are doing with the dais, the fines being made and everything else. You, d- did he have it set up? Right. What was his settings? I, what was the ground thing. conditions? I don't, I don't know. But like, yeah. I can tell you this. If you watch, did you watch our paradise city video? It's called, the video is called Paradise City. You have to go back and watch it. I think we found 65 IHPs in that yard. Okay. And none of them were any deeper than three inches. Um, I personally couldn't say that you couldn't have found any of those with a, like a tracker four. I mean, they were, they weren't in, they were just in the dirt, you know? Um, I, I hate to be like that negative, optim, unoptimist guy, but I'm sure there's some machine coins that aren't wouldn't be found unless you were swinging that particular machine at that moment i just i'm not sure i'm not sold by that like i'm just i'm having a hard time getting into the saying that this technology is really advancing us i kind of wonder if if it's uh you know like the touchscreen radio in your car it still plays music 
you know what I mean? Are you really, did you really get anything out of it? Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really good question and a good point. And then I think, you, you know, something that, that has come along, I think people are missing a lot because they're putting too much into their VDI and, you know, so I mean, there's a lot out there. I don't know. Um, you know, we've all heard of these old timers that are that are. You know, I know some that are still hunting with uh, detectors without, you know, single tone detectors with no VDI, no screen or anything, and it'll, and it'll tell you what they're about ready to dig. Um, right. You know, I, I so yeah, but I think. I think we're seeing improvements on depth and their their capability to to handle iron, to handle trash. We're getting. I mean, you like to look around the internet, yeah, or uh, YouTube. Go out and watch some videos on the Rudis Alder seventy one. Um, I, I have. Uh, th- <laughs> that thing is a beast. It is a monster. Go ahead. In, in my test the... that I did in my side, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Everybody's walking on. Everybody, go ahead. You first. I, 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 sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't hear you starting to talk there. Sorry. I was going to say in the test that I did in my side yard with the Rudis, there is no doubt in my mind that if I was looking for um, mid mid range targets, gold and whatnot, I could clean up with that machine easily. Because it separates so well, and there's such a huge span, uh, and in your points of uh, separation there, and I think you got like 120 points or something. 120. And that in the test I did, it, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. That's so really you can awesome. really zero in on, you know, specifically is it, you know, pull tabs, uh, like I mean, it'll it'll pull them all up different too, like. It, I was seeing different numbers for larger pull tabs, smaller pull tabs, newer style pop can tabs, uh, all that stuff. And a lot of like, a, you know, a can Fetty or can slaw, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, <laughs> can all Fetty. that stuff, man. It, it just, I like that. I'm using that. It was imp- <laughs> all right. See, I, I stole that off somewhere. I heard. I didn't make it up myself, but, uh, but, uh, yeah. And I saw a huge, uh, variation in, amongst those numbers so to me that's a, a absolutely this machine should t- and it's just ridiculously fast i don't care how much iron's down there that thing's blazing mm-hmm. i so. i'll tell you something really quick um i've got the stock coil on mine i've been i've been getting out with the the multi-cruiser um when i get out i've i, I mean i just now started getting out some because of the weather it, it has been you know, I'm in Texas. It's miserable, but uh, I've gotten out a couple times the last couple weeks. And with the multi cruiser, I love it. It's it's amazing. I, I still have some stuff I'm wanting to test and write about and stuff, and I'm I'm getting there. But uh, so back in April, I'm not big on test gardens and and air testing and these board tests and and all that. I think especially air testing is just ridiculous. It's it's not a you know it's if you want to do it, that's fine. Uh, air testing's not. I mean, when they're, when when these guys, this is what my article is is discussing. When you put a, put stuff on a board and you and, and and some guy's swinging over it saying, "See, that's why this detector's better." No, I'm sorry, man. Put it in the ground. Don't don't feed. I hate that stuff because it's not true. It's not. Um, you're not getting getting good information that I feel like you should be feeding. Your your people watching this this misleading information, um, but anyhow, in the in the ground I've got three dimes and that's fine. I mean that's still not real world. I don't have targets in around them. It's just I want to see how deep a detector will get with the the multi cruiser running stable. The gain pole put up. I can find a ten inch dime. My ten inch dime, no problem in every program. Well, just the other day, and I've been doing some testing different times, like when it's dry, when it's wet. I grabbed the, I don't know if I told you this, Matt, I grabbed the Rudis the other day. I'm like, I'm just curious if it'll hit it. And I went out there and in stock gain, stock setting, I turned it on. It'll hit that dime at 10 inches. 
And I was like, whoa, man, that's surprising. I didn't even expect to get the eight inch, not at stock, stock sensitivity. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited to get back on that one and, um, really push it and play with it some, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I took over. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I got, uh, I got a similar garden. I got, I got an eight inch dime. I have a five inch nickel. And one of the first thing I do is I go out and turn all the machines on just in their, you know, ground balance them and see if they'll hit them. And I gotta be honest, dude, I, even my old white XLT hit the eight inch dime. Um, and I, I guess that's, that's what I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get the, I haven't quite, uh, I, it's going to be hard to really sell me on much anymore. I, the more I played, I think I went through 35 machines. Um, I don't know. My, my thing is, is if you can't do it on a board, like you said, the board test, I don't really put much in it, mm-hmm. but if you put like an ACE 150 on there and it can't pick it up on a board, it's surely not going to pick it up with ground mineralization and, you know, a big halo effect. So in that sense, I kind of do give a little bit of credit to the, to the board test. And then after that, you have to put it in the field. If the machine can't do it in the best of situations, it's surely not going to do it in the worst of situations. You know what I mean? Oh, Justin. Yeah, but no, no, no. Hey, if somebody wants to, if you want to set up a board and in your own time, use it, or I don't even care if you want to do a YouTube video of it, but when you do a video Here's what I'm getting at. Um, look, I've gotten away from mine labs. I'm not saying I would never get another one. Um, I found some really great detectors I like, and in my opinion, work better than than than. Well, I mean, E Track was a silver magnet. It was still it's still one of the best I've ever seen. But anyhow, I remember years ago watching this this guy on his board compare like the E Track. to a couple different and the e-track just failed miserably and he's like that's why i don't like the e-track you know it look how it performed on this board and it's like okay now but put that stuff in the ground because i've 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 dug hundreds of silver coins with the with the e-track and many of them had nails in the hole and in in with the 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 coin above it beside it below it um don't sit there and show me don't sit there and show me on a board how something else is far superior. And I had nothing. I, I have no problem with a, a T2, F75, any of those. But you're not you're not putting out good information. You're you're showing. That's what I didn't like. That's that's why I like field tests. Like I like legitimately when a dude has a machine, you really seem to know. You know what I mean? And it's like you said. It's hard to tell on YouTube who the guy is if he set the machine up if he's biased to the machine. Um, I, I really enjoy, like, like I said, most of the time, some of these targets John pulls out with that AT Max Pro, I don't know what he's hearing that makes him think that that's a good signal to dig. His VIP numbers are jumping 30, 40 numbers, and there's a chirp. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's good right there. I'm like, <laughs> that's like, that's no, knowing no. your that's knowing your detector that's right there. your machine. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I that's one of my faults. I don't spend enough time with one machine to really – brewed into it but um i don't know i like to play with them and i i i just always wonder i guess is my thing you know mm-hmm. is, the, is there a next is there actually something that's insanely better than the next and, uh, and well, i'll tell you when they it. i'm sorry when they develop a uh if some if someone puts a pulse induction machine that can discriminate on the market yeah, you got my money that yeah i'm buying yeah. Uh, i'm buying yeah. and i'll tell you that right you, now you, you got my money when that happens yeah no doubt i just i wonder like um i don't know like i talked to the i talked to some guys and i talked to a few developers i don't want to name drop or anything but then you know i, I it kind of elevated my eyeballs a little bit and you know like did you know that like lead and gold are only one molecule away and he said show me a machine that's smart enough to you know identify that one molecule difference. Oh my God, you were my money. You were talking I I know who you were talking to. I, <laughs> I bet know you, you know who I was talking to. Yeah, because he the, Yeah. You know he's no longer he, there. Yeah, I found that out that's the hard way. If he signals made a phone call and 
was trying to talk to a guy about some stuff. And that's why I said, I don't want to really put too much out on who it was, but the dude had a wealth of information, man. He, mm-hmm. like I said, he shook me a little bit and made me re-examine everything I looked at and tried to understand about the machines. And I started running them simpler. I started taking away all those, those crutches. And as soon as I started removing the multi-tones and the huge discrimination and my fines went way up. Uh, I, there's a few videos you laugh. I started calling myself Tony one tone because it was hilarious. I, I went through the same area 20 minutes before that got frustrated because I couldn't hear anything. Cause it was just a bunch of noise flipped it on the one tone and started pulling coins and relics. And I went, how, how is this possible? You know, but and that's I, what I started me on the whole simplicity thing. Yeah. I, I can tell you why that's, why that's possible. I, for me, anyhow, you know, I get overwhelmed listening to a bunch of tones coming in my ear. It, it, it uh, it gives me anxiety at times. And when you simplify yeah. that, you know, I know guys who, who do this and do it successfully, and I have no clue how they do it. They will run an E-track wide open 50 tone. And, oh, and, and I just, I, I don't, I can't even wrap my mind around that. Um, I got to where I ran my E-track in two tone probably 90% of the time. Um, it's something I love about the Tesoro. Set set your iron discrimination and listen for a good Larry, repeatable beat. You know, it's it's that simple. That's, that's, that's um, how I dig holes. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think those guys that can that's how, that's they, how they, I they ran my e track. Fifty Dude, tone. Fifty tone wide open, man. You, are you one of the guys that can tell the difference between a, a C sharp and like a G flat? <laughs> oh yeah, like I I I run that fifty tone wide wide open screen, and I can tell you I don't even have to look at the screen on that machine. When I was running that machine real heavy, um, I, I could tell you exactly what it was going to be. I mean, with you know ninety percent accuracy, and I'd hear a silver from. I mean, them silvers would come in, and you're like, I already know it's silver. Like I I don't even have to look at the screen or anything. I'll tell you right now that's silver. Like it, wow. it was just unbelievable. Wow. Now, when I first when yeah. I first had that machine, though, I will say, the first week I was sitting there and just cursing it and saying, "Man, what the hell did I just do? I, I don't. This makes no sense to me. Like, I on fifty tone, I cannot hear it. And after about a week, like I don't know, something just clicked in my head, and it was like, "Oh man, this is amazing." And yeah, but now the now the CTX I I put I run ninety percent of the time on a combined mode, which gives you basically four separations uh, at the top and then uh, a, a level for your iron um, cut off. And um, on the on the CTX in in combined or excuse me in like the multi tone mode, um, I can't seem to distinguish even with the sounds exactly the same. I can't distinguish the same stuff that I could on the E-Track. Somehow the, there was just more fluty tones on the E-Track that, that would really catch your ear. Now, the, the problem with that being that once you're, you're listening, you start listening for silver on that E-Track, and then you miss all kinds of other good stuff because you'll tune it right out unknowingly. And so, But, yeah, dude, 50-tone wide open all, the, all day long, baby. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's... I- that's interesting. I when I when I first went out with that E track, I was out with Nugget and uh, the uh, not the E track. I'm sorry, the Equinox, and we hit that old courtyard, and I had a solid 16, and uh, he had a bunch of hours on that machine already, and he was like, "Oh, that's just a pop tab," and I said, "Listen to it. It was real clean," but um, I dug it. Here it was an IHP, but it was a 16 and that every other 16 I've dug and I've dug hundreds of them because of that one signal has been a part of a pull tab. <laughs> and <it's, laughs> I think that's where I just, I, I have a hard time giving any weight to the VID number and all the extra tones. I kind of figure if it, I know what I want to dig and I just keep digging. I don't know. I get nervous, man. Cause some of these old places, I, I just am afraid to walk away from something amazing. You know what I mean? It's just, well, and that's, that and that's the thing, especially if you're at a place that's old, you know, I'll dig a lot of questionable stuff because 
you, you don't know what it, I mean, what could be there, you know, I mean, it, yeah, exactly. I've dug some really amazing stuff that, that in a park, I would have never even considered digging it, but it, it, you know, in an old house or a super old property, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to dig that more as a, out of curiosity to see what it is. Um, but, uh, and I've dug some stuff that's just downright cool and, you know, maybe not super yeah. valuable, but, but the cool factor of it, uh, and, you know, so I, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing I think out of anything is, is, is your location is what, what are you, what are you trying get? to get from any spot you're at? You know? Um, yeah. so I, but, I guess you never know. Like my coolest find ever was, uh, we were out riding around door knocking all day and there was this old guy, he was probably 80 years old trying to hoe his garden in the town. And, um, the house was maybe 20 at best. And uh, we were like, man, who knows? There might be silver in the yard. And I said, hey, mister. And I said, I'll finish hoeing your garden if you let me detect. And he goes, okay. So I hoed his garden. And uh, Johnny hopped out, started swinging with one of my other buddies. And uh, I got a super clean, it was with an AT Pro, super clean 99. What is, that's nothing. That's like a sewer lid, you know what I mean? Um, And I'm thinking, man, I got to dig this, but. We're in a 20s house. I, I would have never found anything. And I found an 1851 pattern Civil War buckle. And I that blew my mind completely. So now I'm like, anything that sounds amazing, I assume is amazing. <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I, there you go. I was listening. I was, uh, I had John mute and listening because I was trying to figure out something on skype um yeah that is amazing man i'd love to see a picture of that you still there matt yeah i'm still here oh, okay good deal do, do you do the same thing i know there's a lot of noise uh steph said me said that there's a lot of background noise coming in through my end so i've been trying to hit um you um man that is amazing uh is that one of your favorite finds it has to be yeah that's that's probably by far. I, I ran around the yard. Everybody thought I was getting chased by a dog and then fell over. Like I was, I was truly blown away. I, I stick the, pull the clot of dirt out like at seven and a half inches, eight inches is this perfect buckle just looking at me in the face. And I thought, Oh my, I just, I couldn't, I'm still shook about that, man. That was beyond amazing. Yeah. That's in, in a place you never thought you'd find it. Uh, that Morgan Dollar was pretty bad too. I that was pretty awesome. Well, I just, you know, all my years I've never found a more. I only know a few people that have found Morgans. That was it was another one of the days we rode around for five hours trying to get a spot and we knocked on the door and the dude was a renter and he's like, I don't care, I'm leaving anyway. Go ahead huh. and check. And it was like the second signal I dug and boom, there it was a shiny Morgan Dollar just sitting in the dirt. Uh, yeah, amazing. one of our guests uh lives up lives up um tim i don't say his last name matt can um what well, is it we'll go through it one more time just for the, the record it is tim genderman he found a morgan and i think nice. i don't remember i don't remember which which detector but he was about ready to give up he thought it was uh he thought it was a pop can because it like said six inches and he was down like eight, nine inches and still hadn't found it. And he's like, well, I've dug this far and pulled out a Morgan. Yeah. Oh, wow. Pretty cool. I think so the deepest, Go ahead. deepest target I ever, deepest target I ever dug was with the, uh, AT pro at the, uh, I, I think our video is called the silver yard. I dug a, uh, uh, large scent at probably every bit of 12 inches. Oh, that's uh, deep. It was the, it was the faintest repeatable, but it was so faint. It just, but there was nothing else in the signal. Just beep, beep, no VID. And then every once in a while, it would like give me like a seventy, but only every like six or eight passes on it. And I popped the clot out, and it disappeared. And uh, I had the carrot, Garrett carrot, and it just barely picked it up. It went boop, 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 and I went, oh, there's something down there. We kept digging. There, I pulled a large scent right out of the guy. That blew my mind. I don't know how that one happened. But uh, that's that's neat. I think one of the 
deepest, most impressive I ever dug coin size, you know. Um, I found I dug an Indian head. Matter of fact, it was a semi key date, 1872, beautiful condition. Um, I dug it at like, oh, now I'm trying to think with the E track at like 10, 10 inches, like a good 10 inches. And it, it, it would repeat. It was real weird because I was getting a real good number, but it would, it would just, it would repeat. One swing, I'd swing back over, and it, it would repeat every two or three times. But it was solid. It was I was, and I dug down and found that Indian, and she was just beautiful. But uh, I had some deep ones with the CTX as well. Probably my deepest was like an eleven inch Indian. Um, oh, man, uh, the I'm things. Like that. Yeah, with the CTX guys, let me tell you, I you know I've watched a lot of videos in the past, and they say deep silver, deep silver, blah. Okay, yeah. I legitimately last year, now, once again, this is with that 17-inch coil, and my buddy Mark was with me many of the times I dug some of these, so, I mean, it, it, not exaggerating, um, I've pulled, uh, I've pulled silver mercs at 12-plus inches, uh, it, every bit of 12, maybe 13 inches. I've pulled wow. uh, pennies down in that 12-inch range, and the thing was, I could hear them, like, and and the detector, not only could I hear it perfect, like, I was getting VID numbers that made sense. They drop a little bit, and they shift down from, like, a, a, up in the 45s uh, range, but to the, like, a, they'll shift to, like, a, a 1241, and it'll kind of hover at that 1240, and every once and again, you'll see a, a 1245 or something pop in there, or 1145, but... Man, let me tell you, these things were legitimately ridiculously deep. Now, I – and he runs the E-Track, and, and I'd have him go over some of these, and he goes, man, that's iron. There's All I'm hearing is iron. And, and see, and that's where that, that big coil can, like, literally just excel, especially if you run it in the deep program, uh, if you uh, turn that on. Holy moly. I've dug stuff like – I've dug little compact cases and, and all kinds of just different. I dug this one thing one day. I thought it said RIP on the top, and I'm like, oh, hopefully I didn't dig up like a, uh, <laughs> a, a thing of ashes or something. And turns out it said like, I, I forget what it said. It said RIT or something like that. And uh, I was like, <laughs> but, but I mean, this stuff was down every bit of. 16, 18, it, like I was digging for so long, I wasted probably a half hour, like just because I wanted to know what it was. Hold on, and, before, and before sometimes. let me pause you real quick, before. Matt. Yep. Um, Justin, just so you know, he also told me that his his hoo hoo was ten inches. I talked to his wife. She <laughs> said four. She said four on a good day. So just I keep that in mind. No, no you you. No, she said four inches from the ground. You missed the last part of that. <laughs> inches, centimeters. We're not splitting here. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I believe four Matt. I, uh, Matt Matt is... Uh, no, listen. I've watched a ton of videos, and, and where people claim all this stuff, I'm going, that's BS. There's just no way. It's not realistic. And, and until I've started digging a lot of that stuff with that big coil last year, I would have said there's just no way, but after doing it, I don't know, maybe some of this stuff that people claim is legit, but I still find it hard to believe some of their claims with like a standard coil on an AT pro. Like I, it's not happening. Okay. It's just not getting that deep. I, all right. But I, I have to agree I don't with know. you. That's, that's what that fellow that I was talking to that I guess I shouldn't say his name. That's what he said. If you goes, if you got an eight inch coil, he goes, the detector is good for about eight inches. If you put a seventeen inch coil on, and the machine's got the power to push a signal, then you're good for about seventeen inches. And I, from what I've seen, the dude's right. Like you put a six inch sniper coil on, you're not digging something at ten inches. It's not happening. Um, I don't know. No, I, no, I, I want to say this too. There is not out of all, I, yes, did I dig some super super deep. Uh, uh, silver last year, absolutely, and pennies and stuff like that, yes. However, those are few and far between. So, you know, I had always wondered in the past, am I really just missing a lot of stuff that could be really deep? 
turns out doesn't seem to be the case, but definitely there are ones out there that I for sure would have missed without that coil on there. No questions. It makes you wonder, though, what you missed because of that coil, too. Yeah, so I was just getting ready to say that. that. my question. Yep. So, you know what no. I mean? Oh, yeah. Where let I'm me... Gonna... <laughs> I find the happy... Let me... Let me... <laughs> Let me let me come back to that same story. That 17-inch coil, if you got very hot, the, the other thing it'll do to you is you'll walk around all day just really wanting to listen for deep ones, uh, stuff that's super deep, and you'll start tuning out the real shallow stuff. So you might, you got to have a, and this is, you know, uh, location dependent too. If I'm in an old house, I'm going to dig shallow stuff too, but I find that coil sucks, absolutely sucks if it's shallow within like two inches it forget it it'll be all over the board it'll tell you it's six inches deep and a lot of weird stuff it it'll it, you'll hear it but you'll just you know write it off the surface trash and so my buddy mark actually he'll clean up on a lot of the stuff when i'm using that coil that's super shallow that i won't dig because i i just you know you get in a i get in a I don't know. I love when I hear something come through and I'm going, oh, man, that's deep. I'm, I'm digging. And some of the shallow ones uh, <laughs> make me mad. Whereas I, we were in a place yesterday, and I want to – now, I don't think the guy's listening, although I did tell him to tune in. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to a dude we met yesterday. Mark, we were door knocking, uh, uh, Tim and I, and uh, we, we stopped at this guy's house. The front yard was what looked like it had been maybe regraded or whatnot. And uh, I'm like, man, we, we got to stop there and check this out. So – uh, man, not only did he let us in, nicest guy in the world. His wife was really nice, and you know, uh, we didn't come up with much. I found a really nice condition Indian head penny and one silver quarter, and uh, maybe a little. I found a miner's tag and some other stuff, but it, you know, just nothing super amazing. However, um, yeah, I, you know, some people are just you know incredibly awesome and super friendly, and yeah, it was a real nice guy. Very cool. You didn't tell me about a miner's tag. Oh, I forgot to mention that. In fact, the, here's the thing. I just was watching some videos. I didn't know what those things were. I found a bunch of those in my day. Never really <laughs> investigated to see what the heck they were. And, uh, and and I asked him, and he was kind of looking at it. And anyhow, I was nevertheless, I'm like, here, I was like, take it. I, I gave it to the guy. I said, I, I've got a whole pile of these in my house that I've dug out of places, especially old houses for some reason. And, uh, and, uh, I guess I just never really thought about it. And then I was watching a video last night, and uh, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, okay. And I looked at some more stuff. I'm like, oh, that's what them things are. Got a whole bunch of them, but never really thought about it. That's pretty cool. Actually, man, in our area, those are probably, especially in your area, those are probably mill tags. Um, they called it dropping brass. We, we even do it on some of the bigger power plant jobs we go on. Everybody gets a brass tag that has a number um, whatever your numbers are signed and you take it off the board in the morning and put it in your pocket. And at the end of the day, when you clock out, you put your brass, you drop brass and they know that you were out of the plant. Um, we've been on some jobs. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. That, that, that sounds good too. Whatever you want to call them. I don't care. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. All I know yeah. is I got a whole pile of those things. <laughs> yeah. There was a bunch of steel mills up your way back in the day. Wasn't there? Um, where we were at, not necessarily close, but yeah, in my area, yeah, where we were at yesterday, I don't think there was any around, but yeah, in Mathlon, in the area, there's a lot of, there's a lot of steel industry that, that used to exist, yeah. and, uh, yeah. That's awesome. I love finding those. Yeah, all I, all I can say, and this guy, this guy had a, okay, so he had a, a dump truck full of dirt out back that was dug up from the back, because he was big huge sandstone slabs on this house i think it was an 1880s or 1870s house and uh and he was replacing doing uh porch work and stuff and replacing some of the stand, sandstone pieces and whatnot and he goes hey if you want jump in that dump truck and sift through some of that dirt that's in there he's like that all just came off the ground he's like i'm like i i'll try anything once man <laughs> but uh yeah just it was it was a really good time uh, speaking of that, I got, I got to, about years ago, um, my brother got permission for, uh, a township, uh, building where they stored their equipment. <clears throat> and if you looked at it in the 18 well, early, I mean, it, it was there earlier, but on 1870s map, it was a church 
and it's it's all like steel side, you know, steel siding, uh, steel roof kind of thing. It looks like a newer modern pole building, but when you look at the foundation close, it's the original foundation of the church. It's ancient. Matter of fact, back in the woods behind it, there's um, there's some uh, early early headstones. If I remember correctly, you couldn't read a single one, but we went over there one day, and my brothers they just you know, recent big pile of dirt and my brother's running through it and found like an mid 1800s Canadian dime out of there. So yeah, dirt gets moved around and that, that goes back to your, your, um, your, your buckle, man, you never know where something's going to be found. You know, I yeah, mean, it's I just, never, I never thought of that buckle, but just South of there, there was an old train depot that, uh, was running during the civil war and you know from the early 1800s and that's probably what happened the dude got off a train and dropped it you know mm-hmm. yeah you just never hey, know go ahead mr maslin we got to get together one day and you gotta let me put the ctx in my hand that's the only one i can't seem to buck up and buy <laughs> absolutely i want to see that knox myself i want to see if that's something that would interest me by any means or not or you know, I, I don't know. I just, I would be more than happy is, to let you play with it. Here's what I think you guys Ooh. should do. Um, <laughs> that sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> hey, oh, man. I don't, I don't, hurry, I don't swing that way. <laughs> oh, hey, Justin, don't let him lie to you, buddy. He does. He swings whichever way. Hey, Justin, yeah, he I don't. was touching your leg while we were driving in the car, Mike. Right. <laughs> um, hey, here's 20 what, bucks is 20 bucks. I think you guys should meet up and, and and I think you guys should I think you guys should meet up, switch out the multi cruiser versus the Knox and give them give them a run. See what you guys think. I, hey, I'm down. I, I like I said yeah. I, I, I I'm excited. You have to Mike, you'll have to give him my number after we get off air. I don't want all the uh you know, the people that may be listening to be calling me and blowing me up. Right, right. I do it all the time. I, nobody calls me. I throw my number out there every show. Nobody ever calls me, man. You ain't got to worry about it. Everybody's Nobody like, eh. Me out. The Knox is the greatest machine ever made. Right. I don't know what he's talking about. You know what gets me? And, I, and I'm going to give you another food for thought. Why would a machine, a company put out a machine for 600 bucks that's just as good or better than a $1,000 machine they make? It just doesn't make sense to me. I think they're. I think the midline machines are just midline machines. I don't know. That's why I really want to play with the CTX and see what I've been missing, or am I missing? Uh, a lot of people say that the seat. Everybody's can play. Oh, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. Listen, when I swung the E track, that thing destroyed my shoulder, and it's just not balanced all that well. The CTX, on the other hand, I honestly think even if it was a pound heavier than it is now. I, I, it still wouldn't bother. It's just crazy well balanced. Even with that big coil on there, I could swing that thing all day long, no problems. Nice. And I'll tell you, you know, you one thing that people don't talk day. about a lot. <laughs> one thing that people don't talk about is some of the, the the other features, which a lot of people say, "Oh, that's worthless. You don't need that on a machine." And blah. I, I've uh, I've done some. Um, yeah, I've done some uh, tests with the the GPS. Uh, uh, system on that thing and, and setting points and fine points. Uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's spot on. If I was out in a huge field, you know, detecting, and if I didn't leave my, and I had to leave and come back, if I didn't leave myself some visual reference markers, you know, I'd just hit a waypoint on there, or a set point, uh, and man, walk right back to that within literally, I don't know, a foot of where you started. And Oh, and so, you know, I, though I don't use that that often, that's something that I think for field hunting is incredibly an awesome feature to have, you know, so I carry another GPS handheld unit with you or something, or, I mean, most people say, oh, I just use my phone. Okay. Yeah, go for it. But you know, I don't got to carry anything additional. Just turn it on and just follow the little guy on the screen. Hold, so hold I on. Where I know I want to be. I got to jump in on this first off before I, before I say what I got to say, Mike Spicer says, don't knock the knocks. It really does kick butt. Mike is very, very good hunter. Um, and I believe that a hundred percent. I, uh, you know, I would like to, I would like to see how the knocks and the multi-cruiser perform together. 
Um, you know, I, I suspect they're, they're very, very comparable, but anyhow, um, you're talking about the GPS feature. Let me tell you where most people don't take advantage. Um, or a lot of people don't know. Okay. It's great for walking out to a site. You're in the woods, whatever, get back out. One of the things I love about it, although not my favorite relic detector, you can, you can watch live where you're walking and it'll keep you on track when you're out in the middle of a field and there's no, there's, there's no, no, nothing really in sight to keep you on track. It is amazing. Turn on the GPS and, and watch it. When you get a signal, you quickly flip over to your, to your VDI screen, dig it and then flip right back. It's really simple to do and it'll keep you on track. Um, it is amazing how good it'll it'll do that. Um, yeah, and keep you on track of where you've been. And you can also add when you get a hit, you can mark it, and you can go back and look, and you'll start seeing patterns of where stuff you found at that site. Another thing I've heard, I, I really haven't heard in a while, but I know when it first came out, guys were loving it. They were absolutely loving it in Florida on the beaches. I, I knew a guy I talked to, and all of his, he was from Florida, moved back to Ohio. All of his friends used bottom for the beach hunting because they could tell where they were at, where they had been in the surf and everything. And it's a it's a really great feature that that really isn't talked about. Now, you know the CTX is heavy. Um, I don't think it was good of a relic hunter as the, the E-Track that neither one of them are great for relic hunting. I mean, they're good, but they're not great. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not like, but, but that is a great feature of the detector for sure. Well, and, and the other thing is you can even take that and then plot it up on. So like if you were beach hunting, like on a regular basis, like all the time, you could plot that out over a course of like, a month or so and then look and say okay geez look at these these patterns as as the tides change with the moon and stuff and different areas where stuff is washing in and i mean you could just absolutely kill it with that information alone on a beach for sure no doubt and yeah i i don't know i you know as a relic hunting machine yeah it, i i don't think it's that great either in fact i in my personal opinion, I don't think the two-tone Ferris on that machine works near as well as what no, E-Track did. I, I, I don't know. E-Track is amazing for um, relics either. But so, you know, it's, it's got limitations for, for what it is. But I, I, I don't know. It's just one of those features on that machine that nobody ever talks about. And I think it's really invi- it's, it's a valuable tool to have, um, despite the fact that some people might say, oh, it's just a bunch of added junk that they threw in there and charge you outrageous price for the machine. No, there's there's actually some really cool uh, advantages to having that, uh, you know, equipped on a machine. I, yeah, I do too. I think it's great. And yeah, I think that's one of the downfalls. It, it does, it's not as good a relic hunter as the E-Track and E-Track's not the very best at it. Um, but you know, you get a smaller coil for the E-Track and you can, you can do pretty darn good with it. But I think now there's better out there, but, uh, that, that's a great yeah. feature. Um, absolutely, man. I, I think that was, uh, I'd like to see more of it. I, I really would. I, because I learned so much using it in the fields and, and started marking and, and seeing patterns of where stuff was lost. And the first time I did it, I the first time I used it, I didn't stay on the screen. I just recorded, and then when I got home, I put it on the screen on on, on Google Earth. And oh my God, there were times I was over ten foot off. You know, you were you walk forty <laughs> yards. You know, you know, you walk east to west forty yards, and you turn around and you start coming back, and you try to stay in in a pattern. And and I was finding like I'd be off ten foot. I mean, it's amazing when you're field hunting like that, how far you can get off like that. And uh, then I learned you can stay on that screen, stay on track, and flip over when you get a signal. That That is an amazing yeah. feature with the CTX. Well, one one thing, Mike, that uh, was just funny you say that because 
you know, a lot of people, like, let's say you were lost in the woods. A lot of people, let's say if you're lost in the woods, a lot of people end up in the long term, end up walking in giant circles because what they don't realize is you have a dominant foot. And, like, so if you're coming up to a tree, let's say your your right foot's dominant or your right leg, you're going to step around to the right side of the tree. And then you keep doing that. Eventually, you wake your way in a circle. So when you're in a field with no references, you know, if there's if there's not, like, you know, corn stalk pieces sticking up that you can stay in a straight line um it's very hard to 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 really if it's a huge field to stay on track and and you know not kind of veer off one direction or the other yeah i i agree and 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 i found out how much i actually did that when i field on it without many references or you know you, you know most of the time you have some kind of reference, but you know, when it's 50, a hundred, 200 yards off or thousand yards off, you know, big tree, trust me, it is real easy to get way off course, man. And, and I was doing that. And, um, so I like that feature. Um, I, you know, I personally, I'd like to see GPS and some more detectors for that reason. Um, put GPS in the multi-cruiser and, oh man, what a relic detector, you know, I mean, you got a killer there if you do that you Mm -hmm. know what i think me i think justin i think what we need to do is i need to meet up with you we need to go to a site i'll bring well i'll bring whatever machines you want me to but i think we need to shoot a video um with the cruiser straight out against the um the um the equinox and what i envision or what i'd like to do and I've been wanting to do this. I just don't have no one to take the time to do this with me is, is take one machine, have person, you know, basically grid off an area, take one machine, go across it with, have one guy go across it, have the second guy follow directly behind him. Then when someone, you know, if you get a, a, a signal or something or the other guy gets a signal, um, then I come over, check it with the machine or vice versa. You check it with the other machine compare notes um take notes on that and really show the differences okay did both machines find it did one sound a lot better was one a lot questionable was one not as questionable and then furthermore you know and then but but basically walk one guy in front of the the other guy and cover the exact same sections of stuff um and and see you know just put them to the test and and, you know with that too one thing that i always want to do when i'm out and i just I, you know, you get a nice signal and something, especially a deep one for me that get, I get so excited. Like I like to, I try to, uh, I try to film a lot of stuff, but I, I get so excited that I just don't do it. And, uh, but what I really be interested in seeing is then run through some different settings and see how that machine reacts under different settings, different conditions, different, uh, sensitivity levels and do that, uh, you know, against multiple machines, multiple machines on the same target. And, uh, now, obviously, you know, to come through and then edit all the video, there's going to be a lot of time in that. But I think you, we could throw together a really cool video, um, you know, showing different scenarios and settings on, on targets and what a machine was able to find or not find. And then furthermore, um, you know, it, with what settings it sounded good or didn't sound as good or, you know, and, and now obviously every area is different, so that would vary, but... Um, I think you could really get a good understanding of, um, you know, how the different mach- those two machines in particular react to each other or, or react uh, uh, up against the same targets and under the different conditions that the machine set to. He he, you've done put him to sleep, man. You talked so long. Good job, <laughs> Justin. Are you there? And uh, what happened? See, he doesn't need a sleep doctor. Just let me start talking and everybody fall asleep. Uh, it shows he's... T- uh, it shows he's still on the call, so I don't know what's happened. Man, have we had issues tonight. You there, man? Yeah, I would love to. Oh, you're used to what's that yeah yeah i would really like to uh you know i've always i've always wanted to and see that's why you know we were talking earlier mike about that place that i said i have worked hard to clean out any signals that should be worth digging um at all like and there's basically nothing left that hell there's not even many mid-tone signals left in that area of that of that field 
Um, and I want to get in there with the Rudis. I want to take the, 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 the impact out there. I need to take the cruiser out there and, you know, the E-Track, I don't need to take that out there, but, uh, yeah, I want, I definitely want to take the cruiser and the Rudis for sure, because I want to see if there's, and, and, and in fact, I want to see too, um, at that particular spot, the mid-tone signals that are out there, if there's any that, you know, chime up and, to me would say oh yeah i should definitely dig this because there's there's nothing left there that i would absolutely even really consider digging and i'm just curious you know especially in that mid-tone range with the rudis and and even with the cruiser if if there's just under different scenarios and different cases like different machine what what have i missed that's i'd really like to know and that that's going to be coming real soon and i'm going to shoot video for that uh for sure uh, when I go through there, because, um, like I said, I've beat that spot to a pulp with the 3030. It's been pounded with the e track and I'm pretty confident after that last time I was there, they're finding another silver that I somehow magically never found before. And a couple of Wheaties that I might find something. I, I, I'm betting there's still some stuff there that I'm just missing. It's just not, I'm just not finding it. Yeah, I, I think so. But here's my thing, man. I, I love you to death, but you're a fart in a skillet. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, we still have people asking, "Hey, where's the balloon video?" And and I Listen, call you, me, and, me, and you're like, "You're that. like rabbit, squirrel, shiny coin, go kart." And I'm <laughs> like, "Dude, about, I mean, Go I'm ahead. gonna go on the record with the balloon video and say this." So just so everybody's up to date and understands where we stand with that. I had two cameras running that day. One camera was a GoPro mounted on my head. The second was a GoPro. Well, it's not GoPro brand, but a GoPro camera. Uh, it was sitting on a tripod. Very interestingly enough, I did find the one that was on the tripod. Now, if, you, if anybody, just real quick, I get distracted very easily. I have a lot of toys basically Squirrel. in my house and bicycle I don't put stuff away properly so i'm a very unorganized person and i lose a lot of stuff within my house or i leave it places and forget i just lost a shovel yesterday i let it sit in the park and forgot all about it and uh, um nevertheless uh i found the the tripod video which was aimed directly at where that balloon was coming from and the video starts off perfectly fine it's filming the park steady all of a sudden, video shuts off. The camera apparently had shut off at one point. But what, what was interesting about that is that the batteries, as that was months ago, okay? I just pulled that out of my closet yesterday, or not yesterday, this past week. And the batteries are still charged on that, and there's still plenty of memory on the, on the memory card. So why the video shut off didn't record, I don't know. Now, as far as the one that was on my head, which I know for a fact was recording at the time, because I had the remote around my neck and I know it was recording. That camera, along with uh, three other of my uh, GoPro cameras, I haven't been able to track down and locate exactly just yet. Uh, I, see, I got a lot of stuff and I don't notice it's missing until I go looking for it. And then that's been so long ago, I don't know where it's at. I did a, a couple hours search in my, yeah, in my office. The other there day. you are. We lost you. Hey, he's back. Don't worry, yeah, Matt's, yeah. Matt's still talking. He's still talking to you. You're uh, fine. Yeah, you that up here. Here. So, <laughs> no, it, but, but here's the thing. I have not been able to track down that camera. As soon as I find it, I will, I will post that video. I have not located it yet. Now, I'm telling you, if there's anything really crazy, uh, ridiculous in that video, I'm, I'm not – I ain't posting it. I'm throwing the memory card out, and I'm, that's going to be the end of it. That, but I have not found the camera yet. Hold on, I got a quick story I want to tell our I want to tell our listeners um, to help help them understand what you're about. So Matt calls me the other day, and he is in a complete freaking panic. He he's looking in his in his vehicles, his wife wife's vehicle, the garage, the basement, the closet. He's looking for a CTX thirty thirty, and he's going, "Oh man, I don't know where it's at. Oh my god, I think I lost my CTX. I don't know where it's at." And and I list this a few minutes, and I'm very concerned, but I got to get off the phone. I'm like, "Text me as soon as you find out." 
a few minutes later, he's like, ha ha, I found it hanging where it belongs. Like, that's what I'm like. I'm telling you, man, squirrel, go kart, bicycle. I mean, this guy is he, he. Okay, hold on. Matt, how many how many cameras do you think you have? How many how many uh, cameras? Seven. Okay, how many? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It gets better. How many um, drones do you have? Well, technically three. Okay, let's hold on. That's fine. How many YouTube videos do you have? Uh, <laughs> one. <laughs> he's hey Justin he's got he's got mounts for his head he's got a tripod I bet that guy oh, has man. two I bet he's got about two million hours of videos that would probably be killer but he doesn't he, he he would sit down and start a video and go squirrel bicycle I need to do this or like he'll see a piece of dust a little bit of dust on the corner of his desk and he'll start to edit he'll get up to clean that Six hours later, he's in the kitchen finishing up the cleaning. Guarantee it. Rocky, Love you, no. man. It's, uh, that's, that's no. Just how no. I, you know, no. Rocky, I do no. have a lot of really cool video, but for me to Rocky, sit down no. Hey, guys, edited. i got to get off. My shepherd's about to kill a critter. Okay. Um, Rocky, come oh. here. Hey. Come. Enough. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys. See <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's been a real good night. A real good night, man. I'm telling you, man, it was no go from the... I don't know why I spent so much time trying to get this show together. I should just been like, nope, that's enough. It's not going to work tonight. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> it, it has just been a, a real special night tonight. We lost everybody. Everybody's like, oh, God, this this went off the rails five minutes into it. Train is off. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I man, I think we're about done. But I don't know if anything else can go bad, but before it does. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, man, I'm kidding. Hey, I, I, you know, I joke, and it's true, and you know no, that about I, yourself. I <laughs> no, yeah, no, I don't care. Like, I realize the thing is, like, and that's the thing. I have a ton of really awesome metal detecting videos that I shot in the past, and. I'd like to sit down and edit them and put it together. It just, I, I think my brain's too far gone for all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very possibly. I mean, very, very possibly. I, I mean, I don't know, man. I, hey, I love what you do anyhow, but uh, you just cracked me up, man. Just cracked me up. Yeah. Yeah. The other day I was on the phone and he was looking all over the place for his missing video cameras and, then he lost his CTX and yeah, good times. Oh, man. I was I was really worried when I couldn't find that CTX. Oh, you were full blown looking panic. And looking and looking and I, I know and 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 the only reason I looked up on my wall of like eight detectors or nine whatever's up there I don't know. Uh, only reason I looked up there was because I thought, well, I'm gonna have to take the impact or the cruiser out. I I'll just grab that and just settle down and think about what I might have done with that CTX. And <laughs> I looked up there and I saw my wireless module and I'm like, Oh my God, I actually put it away. <laughs> right. That's awesome. I never, that would have been the last place I looked is where it was supposed to be. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Hey, you need uh, to get a hold of Justin sometime. He does videos. We didn't even mention his YouTube videos. Um, do you know, do you know, off top of your head, do you know what they are? Do I need to go look them up? I, I know you can go look up Justin DePace. Well, if you and, just type in Justin DePace, uh, type in his name, it'll come up, and then you'll see Johnny U, Johnny U Adventures uh, is another yeah, that's, thing. But him and uh, another uh, gentleman, uh, they got a bunch of videos out there. They're pretty good, and uh, I was watching some stuff last night. And, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, definitely check out his videos. He, he finds a lot of cool stuff. and. Uh, definitely no doubt enjoys metal detecting as, as much as the rest of us. And, you know, I think it's, it, he, he, he's kind of reminds me of my, when he said, you know, he said he could build, he can make anything out of his iron uh, with, you know, his hair or blacksmith stuff, but he couldn't draw to save his life. And I'm going, man, that sounds exactly like me. I can't draw a stick figure properly, but I'll build you anything you want. You know, <laughs> it just, uh, 
Yeah, so, but he, yeah, he definitely has some cool videos out there, and uh, I think it'd be worth everybody's time to check them out and, uh, yeah, give them a thumbs up and like them if you enjoy them. Yeah, good times, good times. All right, man, let's, uh, oh, and uh, Bill just put the videos in. Thanks so much, Bill. Um, really appreciate you doing that. And uh, um, I, I was having trouble earlier getting everything going with the um, – I had to do an update earlier and stuff. I wanted to call um, Frank, uh, who does the, the Tesoro mods. He's going to give away um, a, a Depth Devil soon, and he was supposed to call in tonight. I was going to call him. I, I just got busy doing stuff, working on getting everything up and going. But we'll do that soon, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to announce it on the show, one of these shows, on a Monday night. Uh, here's the thing. I, I don't want to draw people to the show on for giveaways. And we have a real good core group that listen to us every week, but the problem is so many don't listen in Monday nights. Less than a quarter of our listeners tune in on Monday nights. Many, Many can't make it. So I want to make it fair, give everybody that listens a chance. What we're going to do is hopefully next week I'll get a hold of Frank and um, we'll talk about it. He's going to come on air and and discuss it. We're going to post it in the group and um, you got to go to the group and, and put a number out there or something like that. We'll do a random generator the following week that way you know so i get messages all the time listen to your show every week i hope to someday listen in live but monday nights don't work for me kind of thing so uh um yeah so we're gonna do that soon uh bill says it's history hunter justin depace um for, for folks on mobile who can't click i don't yeah justin oh yeah okay yeah yeah so if you're mobile it's History Hunter, Justin DePace, D-E-P-A-C-E. Check him out. I haven't watched any of his videos recently. Um, it's been a while, but, yeah, check him out. I, I do remember he had some really cool videos, though. So check him out. Let's wrap it up, man. You ready? All right. Yeah. Yep. Good deal, man. All right. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I am sorry for all the issues. Uh, hopefully we'll get it right. It's been a major, just a major pain with um, with Skype, and hopefully we'll get that figured out and worked out, and who knows. All right. Thanks for tuning in, and everybody have a good night. Talk to you soon. Have a great evening. The All Metal Mode Podcast is sponsored by Digger's Den. If you are looking for a metal detector, get in touch with Mike or Brian. Together, they have years of experience with many different brands and models. They also truly enjoy what they do. You can contact them through Facebook at Digger's Den, visit the website at ddetectors.com, or give Mike a call. He makes it sound Hi. like it's so hard raising our boy, but trust me, he Hold has on, I'm time. almost done. I got to come in. I, I, I got to do this. Four, five, seven, eight.